Luca Chadwick delves into the repercussions of the recent contentious statements made by Donald Trump, a prospective Republican candidate, concerning NATO. These remarks, while controversial, initiate a critical discourse on NATO's credibility in terms of its capabilities. The article examines the deficiencies in the air component of European defense infrastructure and discusses the dependency on the United States, highlighting areas that need urgent attention. As the 2024 U.S. election campaign intensifies, Donald J. Trump has once again made inflammatory comments about NATO. During a rally on February 10, 2024, Trump suggested that if NATO allies were behind on payments, he would encourage aggressors to act as they please, implying that the U.S. might not defend these members in the event of aggression. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. We can get going. Earlier stated about Trump, this poses a significant threat to European security, potentially undermining NATO's image as a united front and hinting that unwavering American support for European defense could be waning. Trump's statements also underscore the need to address substantial shortcomings within the European defense framework. There are widespread gaps in key capabilities that hinder effective operational capacity, and there is a persistent reliance on U.S. support for NATO operations. In the air domain, over 35,000 personnel and 217 U.S. Air Force aircraft are involved in covering the full spectrum of operations. Meanwhile, key European NATO allies have significantly reduced their combat aircraft fleets. Although Trump's remarks may be politically charged, some smaller Eastern European allies like Lithuania have expressed concerns that NATO remains complacent. This internal fear, combined with clear evidence of the reduction in European defense infrastructure, suggests that Trump's interpretation might not be as far-fetched as it seems. The reduction of U.S. assets based in Europe could severely impact the credibility of air power as a European security instrument. Therefore, European NATO members must act swiftly to achieve self-sufficiency among the European member states, should there be any reduction in U.S. forces. While a complete U.S. withdrawal from NATO is improbable, if the U.S. were to withdraw any support, is European air power ready to stand alone? The EU has long attempted to build a collective defense and security framework beyond NATO through its Common Security and Defense Policy, CSDP. Among its objectives, the CSDP aims to continuously develop and enhance Europe's defense capabilities. However, the fundamental flaw of this policy is a lack of mobilizable military capability which undermines European military credibility. Some of the most critical capability shortfalls are in air domain enablers such as air-to-air -air refueling, command and control C2, strategic airlift, and Strategic Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance ISR. Although the CSDP is an EU mechanism, its shortcomings highlight the overall gaps in European air capabilities. The under-equipped status of key European NATO members in the air domain supports arguments that the alliance relies heavily on U.S. commitment. Historically, U.S. capabilities have often supplemented European allies under the NATO umbrella. For instance, during Operation Odyssey Dawn in Libya in 2011, the campaign began as a European-led intervention but soon required extensive U.S. involvement. American tanker aircraft were crucial in extending the loiter time of Royal Air Force assets. Furthermore, surge deployments of U.S. suppression of enemy air defense, SDAD, C-2, ISR, and mobility capabilities into Europe continued to fill the gaps in European air power, capabilities that European nations still lack. The success of the air campaign in Libya, which was largely due to significant U.S. resources, reinforces the long-standing dependence on Washington, undermining European air power's self-sufficiency, being unable to engage. On a large scale without U.S. support risks undermining the deterrent credibility of NATO's European members, they would struggle to fight an all-out war if the U.S. pulled back, especially considering the rise of attrition and dwindling weapon stockpiles. Therefore, NATO's European members must immediately focus on capability development and proliferation to prepare for potential near-peer confrontations in the coming years. It is concerning that since the Libya operation, Europe has made little progress in enhancing the capabilities that are clearly lacking, CAD capabilities, which are essential for achieving air superiority and maximizing operational freedom in the air domain remain limited across the continent. Evidence from the war in Ukraine has demonstrated that these capabilities are essential. Hypothetically, the removal of American capabilities would nearly halve Europe's capacity in this area, with the U.S. election approaching and NATO appearing increasingly fragile due to Trump's campaign. If the U.S. were to pull back, the long project lead times to develop fundamental capabilities would continue to undermine the alliance's credibility. There is a roadmap within NATO to enhance these capabilities and develop a joint nato CAD capability. However, even its mid-term goals aim for delivery by 2030, which is too slow. As of 2020, there were only 59 dedicated SCAD aircraft in Europe minus 35 German and Italian Tornado ECRs collectively and 24 US F-16 CMS based in Germany. Reports indicate that within existing European capabilities, 
there are shortfalls in expertise in munition stocks inhibiting SDAD at the necessary scale. Short-term solutions are possible, though. Lockheed Martin anticipates that over 550 F-35s will be operational in Europe by 2030. A report from the Royal United Services Institute identified several F-35-compatible munitions well-suited to SAED operations. While expensive, the evidence shows that this would be an effective means to quickly enhance European air power, indicating that relatively fast-paced solutions can be found. Beyond SEAD, other key areas remain underrepresented within European air power. The UK House of Commons Defence Committee exposed numerous UK-specific shortfalls in their winning it report. These include a gap imposed by the premature withdrawal of the E-3D and its insufficient replacement with the E-7A order cut from five to three aircraft, leaving an inadequate to airborne C-2 capability. British air mobility has also been significantly impacted as the divestment of the C-130J was declared to negatively affect special forces operations. This move comes at a time when allies are procuring C-130 airframes to address capability gaps and limited infrastructure airlift operations. Given that European capability shortfalls specifically involve C-2 and air mobility, Britain's failure to deliver these core capabilities as a leading NATO member negatively impacts the alliance's overall credibility. European air power is clearly fragmented, with determined approaches being made in some cases, such as in Poland and across the Scandinavian nations, while elsewhere, there is more evidence of shortfalls and little meaningful progress. This indicates fragile NATO air capabilities overall. Hence, if U.S. contributions to European defense were diluted tomorrow, the outlook would be bleak for the alliance's air power capability. Even if this seems unlikely, capability proliferation to ensure European self-sufficiency and reduce dependency on the U.S. will be extremely beneficial to NATO's overall fighting capability and deterrent credibility. We should consider whether continued F-35 proliferation is a symptom of continued U.S. dependency. However, with over 550 F-35s projected to be operational in Europe by 2030, the aircraft is now deeply embedded within European strategic culture. The F-35's centrality to European air power means that any attempts to reinforce Europe by offsetting its significance would undermine operators' commitment to modern warfare as the type is now the symbol of fifth-generation combat air on the continent. Nevertheless, for the UK, there are options for reinforcement that do not detract from US-led solutions. For example, the pending divestment of the RAF's Tranche 1 Typhoons by 2025 could be halted. This divestment would leave just 107 Typhoons operational. Despite being less capable than Tranche 2 and 3 aircraft, these airframes can still provide useful reinforcement to air defense capabilities, demonstrated by IXB Squadron's deployment to Estonia for NATO's Baltic air policing mission. At a minimum, these aircraft could be mothballed in a capacity similar to the U.S. Type 3000 storage, where aircraft are kept in a semi-live status, allowing for quicker return to service if needed. This would facilitate the rapid generation of additional capabilities should the requirement arise. Germany and Spain have ensured their early Typhoon's longevity through upgrade programs or committing to purchase replacement aircraft. Crucially, these approaches ensure that the increasingly critical numbers in air power are not lost. The UK should use these approaches as a model for reinforcing combat air without a heavy reliance on the US. The continued relevance of fourth-generation capabilities is reflected through France's recent purchase of 42 additional capability enhanced Tranche 5 refills. As a cheaper and more readily available option to quickly bolster combat mass, established fourth-generation platforms like the Typhoon and Rafale should not be ignored as credible options for fast-paced capability enhancement in an intensifying security context. The Typhoon's continued relevance is also highlighted in its newfound SDAD role, where the Typhoon EK will become a NATO-certified electronic warfare platform by 2030, with Germany purchasing 15 aircraft to replace its tornadoes. With SDAD shortfalls across Europe, it would be worthwhile for the UK to consider acquiring some Typhoon EKs to assist in bolstering independent European SEAD in the long term. As programs to develop a sixth-generation fighter progress, refocusing commitment to older but still highly capable platforms like Typhoon to augment the F-35, will help maintain the F-35's relevance while facilitating more efficient numerical reinforcement. The F-35's capacity for SEAD missions also maintains its relevance in European strategic culture if the focus were to shift towards fourth-generation platforms. With extensive F-35 proliferation across Europe, SEAD integration would offer a realistic short-term solution to Europe's shortfalls, preserving the aircraft's significance. Programs like FCS can continue and eventually replace aircraft like the Typhoon, creating indigenous platforms that move European nations away from U.S. dependence and allow sixth-generation capabilities to take precedence once they are operational. Any moves of this nature will incur substantial expenses for NATO allies, approximately $265 billion worth of aid. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.